Hi everyone, I know that we don't have a lot going on during the week this week because we're sort of kind of chilling until house number two gets up and running and I have a little special LP that will be happening with a new expansion pack coming out. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to gift you guys the short story that I wrote in my blog and I'm making it into a little video story for you guys today. It's only one part, but I hope you guys enjoy. Please know that The Businesswoman was created by Official Girly Simmer, a really great simming friend of mine who makes just gorgeous, exquisite sims. And The Cowboy was made by Vanda Retro, who has an incredible, unique gift for making beautiful male sims. So anywho, without further ado, I hope you enjoy my short story called Yesterday by Virtually. She knew she had to find it before she was late for her speaking engagement. Her speaker notes, the highlights and bullets on radical feminism. She was passionate about teaching the young woman of tomorrow what it was like to be prosperous in a man's world. She was an extremist for the women's rights movement, hardcore, devoted. She was a successful director at a logistics enterprise. She prided herself on working like a dog, acting like a man, and looking like a lady. Isn't that what her mother taught her all those years ago? She would have never allowed herself to be tied down to a man. She never let a man so much as come close to being in a relationship with her. Intimacy? Never. She was proud to be celibate. She wore it like a badge of honor. She thought all men to be evil scum that were only out to get one thing. And that one thing she kept under lock and key. It was easy for her to portray men as disgusting, icky things when she was raised watching her mom becoming a punching bag for her high profile father. It was easy to hate men when, had it not been for her mother, she would have lost her innocence to Yes, it was all too easy. Yet all of her prejudice against men vanished upon meeting him. They disappeared like snow on a warm spring day. Her profound feminist opinions began to shift one glorious summer afternoon when she was invited to speak to young aspiring business students about capable and wealthy women in business. Armed with the smartest suit she owned, she was ready to motivate. She wanted to impress these young women. It was important for her to inspire them to become anything they wanted to be in life. Added bonus, her best friend was a science professor at the university and they were scheduled for lunch after her speech. Her speaking engagement went well as all the young girls sat wide-eyed and encouraged. She felt like a self-glorified rock star. Preaching about not conforming to be simple housewives and other plethora of feminist views. After her last fan bounced enthusiastically out of the auditorium, she made her way to her friend's lab. Her friend was nowhere to be found at that precise moment, so she started to snoop around to see what interesting gadgets and doohickeys she could play with whilst she waited. As she snooped, she realized how thankful she was she got into business instead, because all the contraptions and hieroglyphics did not make her heart dance like managing projects and people did. As she continued to pry in the lab, she tripped on a cord that was connected to the most intriguing mechanism. Her interest was piqued, so she sauntered towards the machine, mesmerized, perplexed. When she got dangerously close, she heard her friend's voice yell, Oh! Don't get any closer, you won't. She never heard her friend's last words at that moment in time. Time. Ironic, as she was being swept into the very fabric of it. It wasn't painful, so much as an extreme and unexpected jolt that coursed through her. It was incredible if she were honest, as she tumbled through the wormhole unscathed. Well, almost. When she finally landed on the other side, she fell in a very unladylike manner in what looked like a barn and into a heap of horse manure. Who goes there? Answer me. Even with the undertones of anxiety, he sounded kind and warm. He carried a shotgun with him as his dog ran up to her and licked her face. D -d -d Don't shoot, please. I I mean you no harm. I'm just... 
displaced, I think, she said almost in a murmur, and in between the sweet maulings of his dog. She tried to keep it together, but the dog was overwhelming her, smelling her crotch, poking her bum with his cold nose. His helicopter of a tail kept whipping around her so fast, it was all she could do to gather her emotional bearings. So she started laughing uncontrollably. The laughter was so contagious, he began chuckling with her. If the dog and barn animals could have, they would have all joined heartily. After what seemed like hours of snorting, guffawing, and inappropriate affections from Pervy the dog, he finally looked at her with amiable eyes and a thoughtful smile. He was the most beautiful man she had ever laid eyes on. Was she in Greece and this one of their gods? Whatever are you doing at this hour in someone else's barn and in such a state? Are you running away from someone? A brothel? A uh, debt? His accent was perfect. He was almost ripped from a period piece now that she thought about it. Brana? Broth? No, no, I'm just lost. She was known for thinking fast on her feet. It is why she climbed the ladder at work so quickly. She understood right away she wasn't home, wasn't even in her era. It was another time and place previous to hers. She could tell by his garb, accents, and the old tools that hung in his barn. His concern for her lack of acceptable clothing noted. I was on my way home. I seem to have lost my way. Would it be too much of an imposition if I rested in your barn tonight? I do promise to get out of your hair tomorrow. It's just... I'm so tired. Say no more. I know young lady will be staying in the barn. There's a room inside the house you can sleep in, if and you don't mind pervy as you curiously call him, sleeping with you. He seems to be keen on you. I'll stay in the barn tonight. Thank you. Pervy can sleep wherever he likes. I don't mind. I will uh, get some water from the well and warm it up for your bath. You look like a heifer, ma'am. With that, they all rolled on the floor howling yet again, tears and all. One night turned into six months of pure euphoria with him. She learned she was in the mid-1800s and he was a young widower. His wife died while giving birth to their first son, a son that died soon thereafter. He was able to finally talk about it after almost a year of silence and depression. Pervy became his companion after the passing of his wife. He came from nowhere, he said, like a guardian angel. A guardian angel that likes to smell lady bits, she proclaimed, and sent him in another fit of hysterics. He was now getting used to having those with her around. I ain't never met a lady that talk like you. That's because you have never met a lady yet. Trust me, ma'am. I'm looking at one right now. She never told him her story, how she came from the future. However, she took advantage of her time with the sexy old world farmer. She even taught him a thing or two on making deals with the trading post for his agricultural merchandise. He, in exchange, taught her how to fish and gut the recent catch. Subsequently, cooked their victims of the lake for sustenance. Yes, everything was done in a much harder way but it was simpler at the same time. The juxtaposition of their lifestyle was unforeseen. Had someone told her she would enjoy it, she would have argued against it, especially the part of catering to a man. Not that she was, mind you, catering that is. She was helping a new friend, a tender-hearted, competent, diligent, beautiful man, and he was helping her. She knew she filled his empty heart and he broke her of her deep-rooted predispositions. Her charming new friend was by far her favorite person in the whole world. He had been a gentleman in her entire stay. Never once did he pressure her to do anything outside of what she wanted or desired to do. She loved his gentle spirit. One radiant night, they confessed their intentions. They became vulnerable with one another and shared a most intimate kiss. The kiss sent a shock through her body an irreversible and sudden surge. 
When she opened her eyes, she was surrounded by present-day doctors and nurses, with a defibrillator at the ready. We almost lost you, young lady. The electrical shock of the contraption you touched was almost fatal. Thankfully, we brought you back. Wh where is he? He? All we found with you were these speaker notes. A month later, her best friend invited her to the new art gallery. The theme was yesterday. The exhibit was remarkable. It brought back so many imminent memories. The ironies of having history become her present. Who would have thought anyone could fracture her tenacious notions? Who would have known her heart would be forever trapped in the past?